Welcome to Ballydoyle, home of Aidan O'Brien. 20 years have passed since this horse, Giants Causeway, gave Aidan O'Brien his first Group 1 victory at Royal Ascot. In the two decades since, Aidan has established himself as one of the most successful trainers in the long history of Royal Ascot, training a total of 70 winners at the meeting. We're here at Ballydoyle today to talk to Aidan about his hopes and ambitions for Royal Ascot 2020, a Royal Ascot the likes of which none of us have ever experienced. Looking back to Royal Ascot, Hayden, it's a, you've had 70 winners there, you know, remarkable success. Is there any days in particular that stand out as being particularly sweet when you look back at them? Ah, a lot of days at Royal Ascot, a great meeting, you know, it's, it's an incredible place really uh, for owners, breeders, jockeys, trainers, uh, spectators. Like it's, it's absolutely unbelievable really and it's very important to everybody. And I suppose um, a lot of good days, the Gold Cups, uh, unbelievable with Yates. Um, St James's Palace. I remember Giants Causeway when he won. He was after getting beaten to two guineas. Uh, Rock of Gibraltar. You know, last very special days to two-year-old races. Listen, it's a very special place, Kevin, and I think it's a place you cannot replicate anywhere in the world. And that's what I thought was great for the for the for them to hold Royal Ascot at the same time and, and get it on. Um, like it would have been an awful thing to lose it for I think the racing industry, for the flat racing industry, and especially and racing people. And you mentioned Giants Causeway, Aidan, 20 years ago this year that he gave you your first Group 1 winner at Royal Ascot. Does it seem like 20 years? <laughs> it, it, absolutely, it doesn't. It only seems like the other day, but I remember he was very important because he was a big profile horse at two, and like I said, got beaten to two guineas. Mm. So we were going there hoping to try to get back on the road, and if he, if he got beat again, I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> but he, he won, and he, 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 like, he was an incredible horse after that, really. And Aidan, looking ahead to Royal Ascot 2020, a few that are being targeted at the meeting that you've mentioned in recent days. Uh, the first uh, is Japan in the Prince of Wales Stakes. Yeah, that, absolutely. Obviously, we would have had liked to have uh, given him a run before it. Um, so it'll be really his first start off of the season. But like, it's great to have Royal Ascot going. And at the, at the time, it, it stood still and it's important for everybody. But uh, listen, he's in good form, Kevin, uh, ready to start, but will improve from the run. Um, he's a horse we look forward to this year. Ideally, like I said, we would have liked to have given him a prep for it. But uh, listen, we think he'll run a nice race and come on from it. Japan is continuing to run home strongly on the outside and Japan has swept past Bangkok and private secretary and then Pablo Escobar it's the Derby third Japan in the hands of Ryan Moore clear of Bangkok Eagles by day staying on well but it's Japan a class apart in the King Edward the seventh Japan wins and he was very impressive over a mile and a half at the Royal Meeting last year. Do you think a mile and a quarter around Ascot will suit him just as well? Yeah, I suppose a mile and a quarter was no problem to him in York. And uh, York is a, f a flat track, you know, so, and he was happy with that. Uh, obviously, he had a few runs before that. Um, but it's often nicer to start maybe at a mile and a quarter, first time of the year, uh, even with a mile and a half horse. So we, we think he's very comfortable at a mile and a quarter, and we think he, he gets a mile and a half as well. And as an individual, Aidan, you've trained two of his full brothers here at Bally Doyle, Sir Isaac Newton and the current Derby fancy mogul. Would you see similarities between Japan and them or are they their own individuals? Yeah, they're all their own individuals, obviously with the same traits, some of, some of the same traits, but they have other traits as well. He's a very relaxed horse, a uh, good traveller, can be a little bit lazy when he gets there, uh, but genuine, a lovely mind, really. And one of the others that are, are confirmed as such for Royal Ascot, Aidan, is Circus Maximus in the Queen Anne. Yeah, he's lovely. We're very happy with him. The same, we would have had liked to have given him a run before it, but obviously he didn't. Uh, he's in good form. He's a lazy worker at home. Uh, physically has done well. Um, we think a mile suits him well. Uh, the tempo of the, of, of the mile race suits him better than the tempo of the mile and a quarter, mile and a half races. Um, it just, it, it's a little bit stronger and he concentrates a bit more when he's, when he's uh, running a little bit stronger into the bit. Four in a line as they head down towards the last 300 yards. Circus Maximus struck the front. Here's two Don Hopper with a storming run from off the pace. King of Comedy and Scardu are also staying on very strongly. Two Don Hop came upside Circus Maximus, but he couldn't quite get past. Finishing off strongly King of Comedy, but Circus Maximus held on. And he obviously tried a variety of trips last season, Aidan. Do you think it would be a benefit to him from being conditioned solely as a miler this season? I think so. 
like obviously we, we like you said we, we tried different things with him last year and he probably felt a little bit tired halfway through the season um, but no we think it is uh, um, we're looking forward to starting him um, and we, we think uh, we, we'll keep him at a mile and probably try not go to a mile of water with him OK, and one of your other big hopes, Aidan, for the, the Open Group 1s at Royal Ascot is Q Gardens in the Gold Cup. Yeah, good for him. He'd go there without a run. Uh, we had him ready to run in Dubai and uh, we let him back then. So, um, listen, we won't get an opportunity to run him before, but seems to be in good form. And listen, he's one of those older horses and it's a day-to-day -day thing with him. Um, you have to mind him. Uh, he's a lot of miles on his clock. Um, so we just have to be careful with him and not to take any chance, but um, so far so good with him. As they race on to the final foot and a half, Q Gardens, here comes Stradivarius, he's cutting him back, Stradivarius taking on Q Gardens, they race as one now, inside the final foot, Stradivarius just with the edge, Q Gardens will not go down without a battle, Stradivarius and Q Gardens, Q Gardens fight back, Q Gardens, Stradivarius in a tremendous battle. And of all the challenges that you've had to deal with, I suppose, Aidan, leading into these big meetings and not being able to get runs into them, would a stayer like him present the most issues for you? Yeah, he's, he's straightforward, Kevin, because he's very good mind and he's very clear-winded. So it makes it very easy and he's an easy horse to get fit as well. A uh, beautiful mover. So all, all the things about him um, have always been very easy and natural. Um, he's going to be a lovely horse uh, when he goes to stud. He's, he's big, powerful, honest, genuine horse and everything is right with him really. Uh, and you've had great success in the Gold Cup in years past, Aidan Yates, Fame and Glory, Leading Light, Order of St George. How would Kew Gardens compare to those horses at this stage of his career facing into his first Gold Cup? Uh, he's very good. Uh, yeah, We always thought the world of this horse. Um, like he'd have had probably no problem going back and competing in the big mile, mile and a half races this year. Uh, he seems to have got stronger as he got older. Um, he's a lot of class, this horse, and uh, um, I think he's right at the top of them all, really. He's, he's right there in the top, you know. And the two and a half mile trip, would you have any great concerns I, 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 in your I mind? Don't, I don't think so. He's a lovely mover. He relaxes. Like gets mile and six real strong. Um, I never thought it would bother him. Uh, we always thought it would help him, really. And Aidan, a big part of the Royal Ascot meeting is the two-year-old races. In terms of horses you have right now, that you would be particularly disappointed if they didn't make the line-up at Royal Ascot, which ones would come to mind? Yeah, I suppose the, we ran a nice horse the first day, Lipizzano, I think is his name. He, he's a very nice horse. And we have three very nice Air Force blue colts. Uh, some of those could go. But like you said, we're a little bit up in the air with it at the moment because we have... We have kind of 10 or 12 horses there that are kind of ready to run and then we have to declare them next week and then we have to hope that they're going to get in. And Aidan, in terms of what makes a Royal Ascot two-year-old, you know, what characteristics are you looking for at this stage? Yes, one, one, one thing only, and that's speed. Like if you don't have speed, you're dead in Ascot, you know, so it's, it's fast, quick, um, they jump and they run, you know, you have to have pace. And given the unique circumstances around this year, Aidan, and the likelihood that horse two-year-olds that run at Royal Ascot are likely, it'll be their second run in quite a short period of time, do you think that will dictate that you have a smaller team than usual? I think we, we'll run as many as we can anyway, uh, Kevin, but it, it mightn't be ideal with them all. You probably won't run, know until you run them. Some of them like a little bit of time between their first run and their second run. And, You'll be backing horses up quick and you'll be going in there without a run. But listen, it's, it's, it, listen it'll work for some and it won't work for others. And that's just the way it is. It's not, not ideal for everything, but some of them it will suit, you mm. know. So, but it's great to be racing. And I suppose it's not unprecedented for you to back up a two-year-old that quickly to Royal Ascot. I was looking, looking at it last night, September only had 16 days from her debut before she won the Chesham and War Command only had 11 days from his debut to winning the Coventry so it's not unprecedented. No, no absolutely but I don't think any of them will have those dates well, at that time now even I wouldn't think we'll have 11 days even mm. to anything I think Kevin but listen but it, listen they, I suppose the only thing about it is that they've probably done plenty of work everyone's two-year-olds because they've been hanging around and waiting there a long time so they're mm. probably harder and know a little bit more than they would have usually uh, or that they would have had before you know so um no it'll be uh, it'll be interesting obviously they're hanging around a bit longer uh, so that you'd hope that they would know a bit more so um listen we didn't have the time to be uh, taking our time as much or educating them as much you had to get out there and get in there because they were going to go in at a very high level very early mm. 
And Aidan, you, you turned 50 last year, I hope you don't mind me saying, um, and the kids aren't around the yard as much as they used to be. You know, how, How's life for Aidan O'Brien right now? No, good. Kevin, busy as ever. Like Obviously, the lads were always a big help when they're there, and, and uh, um, they were always very good to bounce stuff off of. Um, they're all doing their own stuff now, obviously, and, and we talk a lot on the phones, but like obviously they're not here. Um, they're all off doing their own stuff, but we still talk a lot, and uh, um, like obviously we're, we're busy, and uh, it was good to have the... Uh, other opinions and and uh, no listen we're uh, looking forward to and enjoying everything so far thank god a slightly quieter life around the house now yeah exactly listen they come and go um but listen they, they all they're all doing their own things now kevin so listen it's, it's um no it's good <laughs>